five at the 32 yard line. Now Darnold firing quickly here, and that's complete. Darnold's pass. Complete to that's real good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Really, defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. On first down, Darnold. And Cooks has it over the middle. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. To Brandon Cooks. The numbers for Cooks in that game last week. Seven catches, 59 yards. And he's able to haul that pass in there, but he knows he's got a tough task ahead of him. This unit in the top five in the NFL against the pass. He's going to have to really work hard to get open. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Here's Johnson. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Danico Autry on the stop. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. At the Colts, 40 From the gun, a run for Johnson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. And we often talk about defense bend setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers. But how about here? This is a cornerback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Back to throw, Darnold. And this is going to be incomplete. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. The Colts take over. Now comes the Indy offense for their first drive of the game and leading him out. Their new quarterback for 2020, the longtime Charger, Phillip Rivers. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Seven yards there at a first down. A gain of seven. First down, Indianapolis. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. They'll find Paris Campbell, that's complete. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. From the gun, Rivers. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 15 yards on the play. First down. First down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving. Scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Rivers. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And down right around the 37. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. 
So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 37-yard line. Rivers again. Now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. The defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. So following the fumble recovery, here's Darnold. Over the middle here to Brown. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. On first and 10, Darnold. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Will Fuller, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Texans have taken the early lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, Remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Dan Bailey, set. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. On the return, it's Naheem Hines. And able to get this out to the 25. Take over first as 10 at their own 25-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And last time the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they thought they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that... Bad taste out of their mouth here. A gain of five brings up second and from the 31. Rivers. Open man is Trey Burton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of It's a first down on a gain of 10. The numbers for him from a week ago. Five catches, 64 yards. And he's able to pull that last pass in, but this is usually a pretty tough unit to try and maneuver against. They're in the top 10 in the league against the pass, and you and I both know there's not much difference between 1 and 10. In on the tackle, it was Duke Edge of 4. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and... Throwing on second and 8. Rivers. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's third down. On third down. Rivers. Eight yards to go. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Zach Cunningham rolling in to get the sack. And they're picking up right where they left off of the shutout that they pitched last week. A huge part of that, this pass rush. They know how to get after people. Offensively, good luck finding some answers right now. Is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. 
And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And are you one of those early holiday shoppers, partner? Are you one of those guys get your list done? Because I think about what every team has on their holiday shopping list right now. What's the number one goal? Make the playoffs. Number two? win your division number three and i think the biggest goal of all try to get the number one seed so you get that first round by and ensure you don't have to go anywhere in january and hopefully get to the super bowl that way four yards on the pickup and it'll result in a fresh set of downs after one seven nothing on ea sports nothing First down, it's Darnold. And Darnold, he lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of a quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you, all right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth Everybody. leagues. Take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, because here come the defenders. Rivers now after the fumble recovery. This one into the hands of Burton. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Seven yards, the pick up there. It's a gain of seven. Brings up seven. Throwing again on second down. Rivers. Yard line. The pass underneath, here's Hines with it. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It's a gain of six. And the Colts, first down. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Number 25, Marlon Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job there on the tackle. Keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you. Keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. Rivers to Hilton there. First down, Indy. Working out of the gun, Rivers. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. J.J. Watt, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Rivers throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Interested to see what they dial up here. Third and goal with a lot of green between them and the end zone. From the gun, Rivers. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Everson Griffith, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Third and goal, they decided to throw for it, but how about the play defensively? Couldn't find anyone open. Left him nowhere to go with the football. Had to absorb the sack. Rodrigo Blankenship for the Colts field goal. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. That keeps the score. Texan 7. Colts nothing. David Johnson in the Houston offense yet again. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but 
I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. On the ground, this is Johnson. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Danico Autry on the stop. That's a gain of three. Brings up third and they'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. David Johnson. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Now another drive coming for Phillip Rivers and the Colts. He's playing pretty well. I don't think it's necessarily him changing up something he's doing, but that old line, they've got to protect him better. They do. They've got to make sure that they give him more than enough time in order to find targets downfield. And sometimes what happens when these things are going on is that the, the field general will step up and say, hey, that's on me, guys. I didn't get rid of it fast enough. Anything to try and relax them a little bit and take some pressure off because they do know that they are trying. Yeah, well, we've seen the four sacks so far in this contest. 15 yards is the pickup there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Good pickup there by Marlon Mack, and he was a 1,000-yard runner in 2019 and has been very consistent in moving the ball for the Colts. Last two seasons, at least eight touchdowns rushing each year. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Now Mack. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. This defense is really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense going to have to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Second and 11 now. Rivers, he's got Burton here. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Operating from the gun. Rivers, that's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of ten. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football 
all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football off a triple option, you've actually called that play. They get the former number six overall pick, Quentin Nelson, out of Notre Dame that time. They'll run it out of the gun with Mack. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. On second and nine, Rivers under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Everson Griffin make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Well, nothing takes to start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And Old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Now that sack leaves Rivers and the Colts with a third and long. From the gun, Rivers. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Sam Darnold leading the offense out for their next possession. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got... The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. some hot water now after that sack it's second and 21 another try after the first down sack Darnold and that one goes incomplete he's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it well as we get ready for third down let's go back and recap here the sack on the first play of this drive that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Here's Brian Anger now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The first down throw here for Rivers. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Second down, Rivers again. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch just one yard, making it third and nine. Hop 
operating from the gun. Rivers, and that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. On the return comes Cobb. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. A final shot before the break. Darnold lets it fly deep for Cobb. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We're starting to get near the home stretch of this NFL season. It's week 13, so let's get an update on what's going on. Well, we get our tour out at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, and it's the Titans with the lead as they hit halftime. Ryan Tannehill looking good. Two touchdown passes. From there, we head down to sunny Miami to check on the Dolphins at home at Hard Rock Stadium. And for the moment, they find themselves trailing the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Mixon with a touchdown run. Meanwhile, in our game, just the lone touchdown accounting for all the scoring. A tight one, 7-0 is the score. And for the call of the second half, we send it back to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. 25-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think they were just bad plays to call? We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. First down, Rivers. This one out left to the tight end, Burton. And it's a fumble. And the Texans scoop it. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. A fumble on the play. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Second and short now following the fumble. To throw is Rivers. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from Harv, incomplete. Now it's third down. Bradley Roby on the coverage defensively. 
A man coming off back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons. Here's Jonathan Taylor with it. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, Rivers. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. It doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Operating from the gun, Rivers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So an opening drive interception to begin this second half. And just think about the time you spend the locker room going over what you're expected to do in the second half. Not the way they saw it, not the way they drew it up. You find out this is something that you can't just edit, right? There's no rewrite here. This is live, and now they've got to find a way out of this hole. They begin the drive with Johnson. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. The tackle made at the 20. They go to Johnson again. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A good carry and pick up for a first down there by David Johnson, and he has a chance to fill a lot of voids for this Houston Texans team. They lost a thousand yard rusher from last year. Carlos Hyde went to Seattle, but back in 2016, David Johnson led the NFL in all purpose yards with the Arizona Cardinals. The Texans will be happy to see that guy all year long. Now, on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. Now, a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. He's taken down at the 33-yard line. One-yard gain brings up second and nine. And they'll try the air now with Darnold. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a gain of six. Brings up third and three. Darnold from the gun. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he is going to have a Texans first down, and he was able to get it by play. A gain of eight on third and three. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On the first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down they go back to the ground with Johnson and he'll get it down here to the 43 David Johnson still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down 10 yards on the pickup now it's Darnold and inches He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. First and ten at the 38-yard line. To throw is Darnold. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard. On second down now. It's Johnson, and he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. First down. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. 
They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Here's Johnson. He's been busy this afternoon. And he stopped immediately there. The ball carrier. Back to back stops, make it third and 10. No gain on the play. It's third and 10. Out of the shotgun. Here's Darnold. Open man. The tight end fouls. Darnold's pass. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he could break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he could scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Field goal try from the left hash. This from 39. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the lead moves to 10 10. Is good. Makes the score Texans 10. Colts nothing. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Phillip Rivers, he is the focal point of our player's spotlight now. And boy, Charles, they have to find a way to just get him some time to breathe back there. He's been pressured throughout this game. And I'll bet in his mind he's thinking the focus shouldn't be on how many times I've gone down. It's where is it happening? Where are the breakdowns up front? They'll never say it publicly because good leaders don't do that. But they've got to figure out what's happening in the offensive line to keep people away from him so he actually has a chance to throw the football because so far, that has not been the case. Five full sacks against him. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. They keep it on the ground. Mac again. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, Rivers. And he's got his man, Hilton. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 37, they work on second and six. They'll try to throw here. Rivers over the middle complete. It's Hines. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And the Colts first down. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Throw left side complete. It's Burton. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Uh, coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, but when, he, when he gets moving, not many guys. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. 
J.J. Watt make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Remember, throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. And they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. And that sack leaves Rivers and the Colts with a third and long. From the gun, Rivers. Caught left side by Hilton. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going. So, you know, I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play out of while you've got them rocked on their heels. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Rivers hands this one to Mack. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. down at the 8-yard line. They go right back to Mack. And a little bit of space there. Takes it inside the five to the three. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. And it's third. Operating from the gun. Rivers. And he's got it. And they got three yards. That's enough. A conversion, and now it's first and goal. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified. Big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Looking to run with Mack, and he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Marlon Mack, his first touchdown on the year. And the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. But now they'll line up to kick the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the end result was a Marlon Mack touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Texans take over first and 10. And the Texans set to come onto the field. That last touchdown has made this really tight. They're clinging now to this slim lead. What, the, geez, the second half, they only have a field goal. This offense needs to kick it into gear. And right now, I'm looking directly at the field general, at the quarterback, because to me, he's got to take over right now. By word, pumping his team up, and then, of course, by deed with his play. My school coach used to say that all the time. Laddie, take over by word and deed. And deed means action. Exactly. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. A first down throw, Darnold. Short throw, Fells has got it. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop. Finding the hole in the defense and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. On third down, Johnson. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. 
possession is nine tenths of the law. Possession is nine tenths of winning the game. Go for it, get the first down, close it out. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Rivers on first down. A good throw here, finding Pascal. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. A gain of six there on first. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. The Colts on third down, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, Rivers. And Pascal's got it. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Rivers again. That's into the hands of Pascal. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. To the air again here, Rivers. Catch made here by Campbell. Rivers pass. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. It's a gain of five, brings up second and five at the 46-yard line. They'll throw again, Rivers. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It's third down and five. Again, it's Rivers. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here of what could be their final drive. Rivers throw going to be taken in by Campbell. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Rivers has been through this many times as he'll hustle his guys to the line. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Trying to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. He was looking that time to get it to Paris Campbell, and it's second down. 
Bradley Roby on the coverage defensively. He's back to throw. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to tie things up in the final minute. Blankenship's kick is good. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. Well, we knew this had the potential to be a tight game, but with less than three minutes to play, couldn't be any tighter. We're all tied. All locked up, right? And this next drive is going to tell us everything we need to know about this game because I want to see how they come out with the football. Are they going to be aggressive and attack downfield? You still got a two-minute warning to come up? Or are they going to be conservative and try and hold on and maybe just get to overtime? Houston set to take over. They, of course, tie game, would like to avoid overtime if they could. And a lot of people would go ahead and play it safe here and get to overtime and try and win it there. But, you know, sitting up here in the booth, Take some I, gambles. I say let's go for this thing, try and push it, and maybe catch the defense back on their heels a bit. See if they do that. Will Fuller was the intended target, but it'll be second down. Incomplete. Xavier Rhodes on the coverage. Johnson. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now Johnson. 11 yards on the pickup. And just like that, it's third down. It's a gain of 11. Brings up Again, it's Johnson. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime because neither one got an advantage today. So a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. On the return is Hines. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Colts take over first and 10 at their own 26. Indy set to go on offense once more. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. Working out of the gun, Rivers. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. They'll contain him to just four, second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They'll run here with Mack, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. 
Oh, watch shaking up. J.J. still down here following that last play. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Third and eight situation. A tough spot here in overtime on the opening drive. Operating from the gun, Rivers. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez on for a very important punt here in overtime. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. A little juke. It'll be a 47-yard punt with a net of 40 following a seven-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Sam Darnold leading the offense out for their next possession. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they've made some good adjustments, though. He's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Darnold on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Fuller. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. The 40-yard line. It's a gain of eight. Brings up second and two. The play fake, and it's Darnold. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And it's third and short. Brings up third down and two. To the air again, Darnold. Finding fouls complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they get five there on third and two. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Again, Darnold. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Darnold to throw again. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he will be brought down at about the 6-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. A lot of efficiency here on this drive. Heck, this may be their best drive of the game. Yeah, if they'd moved it like this throughout the entire game, we probably wouldn't be here in overtime. But right now, what you just said was the key word, efficiency. Taking care of the ball, move it downfield, get themselves in a position to score and win this game. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Two minutes left in this overtime session, and still all tied. <laughs> Throwing again is Darnold. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. And yes, they want the points, so they will decline the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple of seconds mulling over what the penalty would do I don't would even do know them? why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, 
Take the points and keep moving. Our final score. Now, partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal, lady. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we got the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So for Houston, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to 8-4. and four. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, they fall to 6-6 six and six now on the campaign. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gunn. 